Hi, everyone. Thank you guys so much for commenting. It really encourages me to keep going with this channel, and I love I love hearing from you guys. I love hearing your stories, so thank you guys so much for the support. I've been trying to get back in the YouTube algorithm, and it really, it really does help when you guys comment, when you like the videos, when you share them, um, if you subscribe, if it resonates with you. So anyway, let's get right into it. So do keep in mind that I channel multiple energy groups on here. So this may or may not be for you. Only take it if it resonates. Never try to force it to fit. If this is your story, then, you know, 95, 99% of it should at the very least resonate with you. Sometimes I channel uh, smaller energy groups, like three or four people, and other times it's larger energy groups. But every once in a while I get specific stories for people that are subscribed to my channel. But anyway, let's get right into it. So whatever whatever wants to come through today, what's the message for someone out there? What does someone need to know right now? Page of Cups, Five of Swords, Five of Pentacles. Mm, let's see. Someone wants to use you for money, honestly. Whoever this is for, this is probably one of those readings that's for a very small energy group, but I'm getting that somebody here wants to use you for something. It's like they want to come back in, but they're coming in with a childish energy, with a page energy, page of cups. It's, it's a love offer, but there's something hidden there. There's conflict there. There's poverty there. It's like they're seeing you as an investment, but not in a good way. It's almost like they're seeing you as an investment, but they're trying to they're trying to get something out of you. Let me look more into this and see what this is. The sun. The nine of pentacles. Hmm. Three of cups. King of Cups, Ten of Cups, the Emperor. I had to pause it for a minute because I was like, what the hell is this energy? <laughs> for some, okay, for some it might not be financial. For a few of you, it actually is financial. This person is not doing well financially. And maybe in the past they used to borrow money from you and they're wanting to come back around for that reason. For others, though, I feel like they actually want to steal your light. I had to, I had to look at it for a second. Are they wanting... They're wanting something from you. Are they wanting to steal your light if you're in this energy group? Yeah. So this person hasn't really been doing well without you. I feel like I feel like you are a very blessed person. You are favored by the divine. You're favored by, you know, the higher spirits, by spirit guides, by your deities, whatever, you know, angels, uh, gods, goddesses, whatever, you know, whatever you worship. You have a lot of spirit, spiritual guidance, spiritual help around you. And I feel like you have to be more careful than most about who you're around because I feel like you might be very empathic. You're very spiritual. You're very in tune. Um, and I feel like you might even kind of absorb other people's energies in a way. It's like, I, I just feel like whoever I'm talking to, it's like you're more sensitive to energy than most people are. And so you have to be a little bit more mindful, a little bit more cautious of your energy. Because I almost, I feel like your energy is very powerful too. I feel like you can be a blessing for somebody or you can be a curse for them. Like if somebody, I mean, you are very spiritually protected. If somebody wrongs you, I feel like it's, it's almost, it almost feels like, like when you leave someone's life, if you're, you know, be it a friendship, a family member, a lover, when you leave their life, it almost feels like the sun leaves their life. Like this, this light, it's like this light, this abundance, this youthful energy that you bring. It's like the light just leaves their life. It feels like they're not as blessed when you're not around, you know? And it's, it's like your energy that, that brings in this abundance because you're naturally blessed. You have all this protection around you. So when you're really um, 
like intertwined with someone, when you really deeply love someone, when they're around you, especially physically on a regular basis, it's like they kind of absorb some of that energy. They absorb some of that protective energy that you have, that um, just that high vibrational spiritual protection, almost like you have like this bubble of kind of, you know, light um, and abundance around you. And if someone's around you, it's like they might, you know, even though that's for you, even though that's a blessing from your spirit guides, someone that's around you is still going to get a taste of that. There's still, you know, there, it's like the, I forget what the word for it is, but, but basically they get some of that abundance from you. Um, and I feel like this person is missing that. And so I feel like this person is wanting to come back around, but they're wanting to come back around because... Their life hasn't really been going well since you left. And this doesn't have to be romantic. This person is coming up as a king of cups. But this could even be a father figure, a brother, a, a mentor. This could be a friend. But it just feels like they see you as somebody that's very abundant. And they probably don't even realize how much you've had to struggle to get to where you're at. It's like they want to know your secrets. They want to know your tricks. They want to know how you do it. How are you so happy? How are you thriving? It's like you're single, but you're living your best life. You might be going out. You might be very social right now. Or they might just see you as someone that's social. Maybe if you're posting a lot on social media, you might not even be that social. But maybe they just think that you are because they're seeing your posts. They're seeing people follow you. They see people look up to you. And they want to know how you do it. And they want to get back in your good graces so that they can kind of steal some of these blessings in a way. King of Cups, Ten of Cups, Emperor. It's almost like they want to use you as a crutch. Like they feel like they could be very successful with you in their life. I mean, I don't get a great vibe from this, but for some, they even could be maybe a little bit depressed without you. And maybe they're not able to focus on work, on finances, on um, like maybe when you guys were together, when they were taking you for granted, maybe they were really focused on appearance, on money, a uh, career, uh, you know, just all these different things. And because they didn't really have to be sad over you. They, they felt like they had you. They felt like they could put you on hold. They felt like you weren't going to go anywhere. And I feel like now that you're not in their energy, you're not in their life anymore, they really feel that absence and it's making them sad. So it's like they don't have that same energy that they had before. Like they can't focus on career, on appearances, on whatever else is going on in their life because they're they're just thinking about you. They're missing you. But it's it's almost like, I mean, I think this person does have love for you, but at the same time, it just feels like they're coming back around because it's like they want to be successful. For whatever reason, they feel like they can't be successful unless you're in their life. Now, like I said, for a lot of you, that could just be them going through depression, you know, pain. They're really missing you. They feel like they need they need you back. They can't focus on anything else until they have you back in their life. And then but th that's the thing. That's the thing that I don't trust about this energy that I'm feeling, though, is because like they do have love for you. But it's it's almost like they just want to be able to go back to focusing on on career, on um, on money, on appearance, on whatever it is that they want. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, focusing on those things, but it almost seems like you're just kind of like a conquest. Even if they have feelings, it's like, I don't see them. How do I explain this energy that I'm, cause I'm channeling it and I'm just trying to make sure I word it properly. So you guys understand what I'm, what I'm channeling here. It's like a conquest. Like they see it as something where it's like, they have to, um, they have to get you back so that they can focus on those other things. Like they're feeling these romantic feelings, but they almost feel like the romantic feelings are an inconvenience to them. You know, it's like they're the king of cups right now. They are in their feelings right now, but they almost feel like they're not in their feelings by choice. Like they feel frustrated. They feel inconvenienced. They feel like, you know, this person's normally a king of swords. This person is like, I don't want to be a king of cups. Like, I don't really want to stay in this energy, but, you know, I'm missing this person. I'm, I'm longing for them. My life isn't really successful without them. So what else am I going to do? 
So it's like they're unwillingly tuning in and embodying this King of Cups energy and this this Ten of Cups energy as well. But but the thing that I don't, the thing that just sits wrong that, you know, doesn't sit right with me about this energy, though, is like, even though they're trying to win you back, even though they're wanting to win you back, even though they are feeling the romantic feelings, it just, it doesn't feel like they're fully tuning into them. Does that make sense? It's like, okay, so there's people that are romantics at heart where they genuinely just feel those romantic feelings and they love it. They tune into it. They take that leap of faith. This person is feeling all these romantic feelings for, for you. But like I said, it's like against their will. Like they feel annoyed by these romantic feelings. They feel frustrated when they miss you. They're not genuinely allowing themselves to be a romantic. They feel like they're being forced to be a romantic. Does that make sense to you guys? Um, and so it's almost like they want to get back to being a king of swords or an emperor type. But they feel like this is like a pro like part of the process. Like they have to be this right now to win you back, to pull you back in. They're like, damn it, like I didn't, I don't want to feel this way about someone. I don't want to be depressed over someone. I don't want to be, you know, drinking over someone all the time. I don't want to wake up crying over somebody. It's like this King of Cups is like, damn it, this is like such an inconvenience for me. Um, but I have to win them back so that I can, you know, stop feeling this way and, you know, go back to having things be stable. So it's not taking up so much of my time, my energy, my emotions, all my attention, and that way I can go back to focusing on, you know, the things I was focusing on before, uh, money, uh, work, you know, whatever else I want. So it's like they love you, but they they feel inconvenienced by their love for you. Um, and yeah, they see you as abundant. It's like you're single, you're living your best life, you're having fun. Even if that's not the case, like you could be depressed over them too, but you're not showing that. You're not showing this, this, this they don't think that you're depressed. If you are depressed, this person has no idea to be honest. They think that you're happy. They think you're having fun. They think they might even be a little bit worried that you're going out and, and dating new people. Um, it's, it's like they want to be an emperor. They want to be an emperor and they feel like they can't without you. And like I said, for some of you, you know, take it as it resonates. Like for some, it's the whole depression thing, the, the sadness. They, they, they don't want to feel that way. Um, for others, it's, you know, they're wanting money. They might have actually been getting money from you for, for, you know, for another, for another portion of you, it could just be that, um, you were just a blessing in your life. Like I was talking about, you know, you have this very spiritual, high vibrational energy. You have a very, you know, they see you as the sun, someone who's bright, who's, who's warm, who's empathic, who's powerful. And they feel like they've just been left in the dark since, you know, since you're, you've been out of their life and they want those blessings back. I feel like maybe they, maybe they had really good luck when they were around you and you could have even been praying for them or you might even be a witch. Maybe you were doing spell work for them. Like maybe you were, you were helping them in some way. I think you were helping this person spiritually, like you were spiritually supporting them. Even if you weren't conscious of it, I think that just your soul is so powerful that it's like, you know, like I said, just being around you, just your energy. It's like there's some kind of spiritual support there that was manifesting things in their life, manifesting opportunities. You know, doors were opening for them when you were around. And as soon as you left, it's like all those doors closed and they're associating that with you. They're, they're you know, they're looking at you like someone who can save them, someone who can bring that abundance back into their life. Let's get some final messages on this. Queen of Cups, Nine of Swords. Yeah, I think you're afraid of, I think you're almost juggling two different mentalities because naturally you are a Queen of Cups. Naturally, you are somebody who is loving and empathic and gentle, but I think it's caused you a lot of anxiety being that way because, you know, it's it's like you're juggling, it's almost like you're kind of at war with yourself right now in a way because you're, you, you know, you're having this anxiety, insomnia possibly, and I feel like you're almost going back and forth between being a Queen of Cups and a Queen of Swords type. Because it's like you don't want to give this energy to the wrong person. And I do feel like, I mean, yes, this person does have love for you, but I honestly do feel like you need to be careful because of the way... 
I don't feel like this person is a bad person necessarily, but I, I feel like this person is not emotionally available. It's like, you're a romantic deep down and you embrace that more. And I think that you probably want to be with somebody who also embraces that. And this King of Cups Emperor, I mean, he could, he or she could learn to embrace that side of themselves. But where they're at right now, it's it's like, that's, that's what, that's what I keep, you know, going back to that just sits wrong with me is the fact that they don't, they don't like being emotional. They don't trust their emotions. They, they don't like being vulnerable. And someone that fights their emotions like that, it's like they're they're going to fight you. They're going to push you away. You know what I mean? It's like they, they don't want you to have that power over them. They don't want they don't they don't want to be seen as vulnerable. They don't want to be seen as weak. They could even have this kind of macho mentality of, you know, uh, men aren't supposed to show their emotions. Men are supposed to bottle everything up. It's... It, and it's someone like that that's so emotionally unavailable. It's just hard. It's like, I think that you see the core of this person. You see that this person is a romantic deep down. You know, they are loving deep down. But you have to also take into consideration who they are consciously, who they are on a, you know, on a day-to-day -day level. And that's very, that's a very hard lesson for a lot of empaths to learn because it's like we tend to see the core of someone. We see who they really are, you know, past their trauma. Um, we see the potential, but, and those are good things to recognize. But, but again, you have to also look at who they are on a day-to-day -day basis um, because, you know, people have free will. And this person can be the most amazing man or amazing woman deep down. They could be empathic and loving and absolutely perfect for you. But consciously, if they're choosing not to embrace that side of themselves, if they're choosing to try to fight the side of themselves that's romantic, try to suppress it, try to fight their emotions, you know, there, there's really only so much that you can do. It's, it's don't fall in love with the potential, fall in love with what someone's showing you, fall in love with what, you know, who someone really is. Uh, don't get caught up in, in what they could be or what they used to be or what, what you see deep down. You know what I mean? Because yeah, they might be an amazing person deep down, but there's a lot of men and women out there who are already romantics, already on your level. They're embracing their emotions the same way you do. That's, that's your true match, you know? Um, and this person could change, you know, that that could change with this person. But at the moment, I just don't see them. I, I just see them seeing emotions as weakness. They just see emotions as an inconvenience that they have to deal with. Um, they, they don't like that side of themselves. They're, they're really self-destructive. You're going to find healing as well. I feel like some of you are in limbo. Like I was saying, it's like you're juggling these two different aspects of your personality. You're like, I want to be the queen of cups, but I don't want to get screwed over. I don't want to be hurt anymore. Um, and it's good that you're prioritizing yourself, that you're thinking about these things. You know, don't just, I, I feel like with a lot of these empathic relationships, it always ends up being all about what the uh, you know, what the man feels. It's like he's damaged. He's afraid of getting hurt. Um, and, and, you know, take it as it resonates. It could be two men or two women, or it could be, you know, I could be saying he, but it could be a she. So, you know, don't get caught up on gender. Even if I use that wording, there's no specific gender here, but, um, I feel like with a lot of empathic relationships, it's like, yeah, it's, it's like you end up getting stuck in that cycle where it's just all about, you give everything to, to that one person and it ends up being all about them, their fears, their traumas, you know, their commitment issues, what they've been through in their childhood that made them that way. And then you end up not really thinking about yourself because you know what you, this queen of cups, it's like you have the same traumas, you have the same fears, you have the same abandonment wounds. Isn't it time that you have someone that prioritized that, that looked at that? It's like you're, you're giving so much to this other person trying to help them heal, but do they ever stop and think about what you've been through, ask you about what you've been through and, and support you in the same way. You know, you need that support. Um, but I do see you building here just on your own. And it's beautiful because you are going to be healing. You're going to be giving that energy back to yourself instead of to this other person. So it's really good. Okay, let's look more into this. 
Yeah, they miss they miss your light. They miss that. They miss your light. You were a light in their life. I don't think that they know anybody like you. I think there's something very special about you. Like you're either you're intuitive or you might be a witch or you might be um Something about you is very unique. Something about the way your mind works is very unique. And I feel like this person knows that they can't really find that with just anybody. Tell me more about this. Let's wrap this reading up. 20 minutes in. Okay, let's wrap this reading up. Tell me more about this. The Hermit, the Ace of Cups. The Four of Cups. Yeah, I think you're going to get a love offer from this person, but I honestly feel like you might reject it or you might at the very least take your time before accepting it. You're going to be strong enough to, you're going to sort through the illusion. You're going to sort through the illusion because you know that there's things here that are hidden. You're not just going to dive right into it. You're feeling this, you know, something's off here. So you're using your intuition more and you're using your logical side more. Okay, let's get some final messages on this. Two of Swords, Wheel of Fortune, the Devil, the Tower. Ooh. You seeing them as the devil is what woke them up, I think. But I feel I feel like you guys are both learning karmic lessons, but in different ways. I mean, for you, you might have had karmic lessons about emotionally unavailable people, um, not giving too much of yourself away, uh, learning how to prioritize yourself more. For them, they had their own karmic lessons. And I feel like I feel like you seeing them this way, you blocking yourself, I feel like it really made them because they see you as an angel. They see you as just this bright light, like you were represented by the sun. And so I think that you seeing them this way, you seeing them in a negative light, there's like they're like, OK, something really is wrong with me. I do need to wake up and change something here. It was like a tower moment for them. And they are wanting to come back and, and build with you here. But again, just use discernment. Use discernment here. Don't dive right into it. Fast communication coming in. Hmm. Yeah, they're going to try to come in and tell you that they have a new perspective. They want to offer you something. They, they don't want this to be a loss. They realize that they messed up. And they want you to know that they see you as a queen of wands. They see you as beautiful. Maybe they didn't tell you that you were beautiful often enough. They want to. They want you to, to know they see you as beautiful, as seductive, as charming. Um. I feel like I could be channeling. There's there's someone here that I'm channeling because I'm seeing a woman that's kind of overweight. Um, I'm not. I'm not like. I hope that God. I hope that didn't come out offensive. But I feel like this man never told you that he saw you as beautiful, and you felt really insecure around him. And I think that he just didn't, I think that he does find you beautiful. I think that he just didn't want to, um, like you're his type, you know, everyone has their own type. Some people like, you know, skinny girls, overweight girls. It's like you, you know what I mean? It's, it's just people have their own types. There's nothing, you know, just accept yourself as you are. Um, I mean, it's good to be healthy, you know, like take care of your health, take care of yourself, of course. But it, it's like, you know, no matter what you look like, you're going to be somebody's type. Like there are people out there who are you could be Megan Fox and there's people out there who are going to think you're not attractive, who are, are not going to be drawn to that. But I feel like for whatever reason, this person didn't tell you that you were attractive. I feel like maybe they felt like maybe they felt like they could control you by not telling you that you're beautiful or they maybe were like insecure and shy and didn't say it. And they kind of regret not saying it. They regret not making you feel like a queen of wands. You know what I mean? Like they regret not letting you know that you're valuable to them.
Yeah, they're wanting to come in and fight for this. I think they're making some changes, like they're no longer seeing themselves as a victim. I think for a long time they kind of saw themselves as like a victim of life, of their traumas, and now they're looking at it differently. It's almost like, I feel like you were kind of a crutch for this person, like they were able to kind of feed off you or like live off your light. Um, like they didn't have to do the, the shadow work, they didn't have to do the inner emotional work because you were doing it for them. You were the strong one in that relationship, but now that you're not there, it's like it's forcing them to wake up and and really grow up and they have to do the shadow work on their own. They have to make they have they have no choice but to be strong now. They have no choice but to do the healing work on their own since you're not doing it for them anymore. Um but yeah, that's that's where you know, that's what I have for you guys. That's where they're at right now. Um it does look like this is probably the same story we got yesterday. I mean, it's the same energy group that we did yesterday as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. And thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you guys for, um, I don't want YouTube to flag me. <laughs> thank you guys so much for, uh, for watching and engaging.